Welcome back to the news today. It was, as per usual, a roller coaster week in the Israeli political arena. Here with me to discuss it are Dr. Hani Zubeda, chair of the political science department at the Israel Valley Academic College. Good evening, Dr. Good evening, Zubeda. Yeah, I want this long title as well. <laughs> well, you have the diplomatic correspondent for the news today, Eli Hochenberg. Good I'll evening. With that. Good evening. Well, Dr. Zubeda, it was a hectic week for Silvan Shalom specifically. After saying he will uh, quit the Israeli parliament uh, following the sex scandal, today it became official. Yeah, hectic slash horrible slash bad slash really bummer week. Um, it, it all boiled down to the question whether he can stay as a public figure, well, elected public figure in the Israeli political arena. It wasn't really clear whether he will stay or not stay, whether he will fight the accusation, which he still allegedly argues that everything is false and he is completely innocent. And we saw what his wife did, um, the half owner of the most popular newspaper in Israel, Idiot Achonot, when she said she is collecting information on the complaint, uh, on the women that complained against him. Um, he was the interior office, uh, the interior minister, and he was the vice prime minister or the acting prime minister when Benjamin Netanyahu left the country. He resigned. He gave the letter today, wasn't yes. it? So it means that he will still be in the parliament come Sunday. Sunday evening, he will be out of the parliament. That is Monday, Benjamin Netanyahu is going to be the acting interior minister, which means he's uh, the acting interior minister, communication minister, foreign minister, and the prime minister. A very busy man. Yeah, which means Well, he's... in regards to uh, Sylvan's uh, uh, comeback, uh, be sure that we will have an elongated, elongated uh, interview both with him and his wife uh, in the upcoming future. <laughs> I guarantee that, but uh, uh, the, uh, the the issue now is, of course, the uh, the uh, uh, the uh, open office uh, Sylvan is leaving behind him. But before we dive into this uh, subject, let's see a summary of uh, Sylvan's uh, Shalom uh, political career. There are those rare success stories of people who began from scratch, worked hard, rose to prominence, and made their dreams come true while inspiring humanity. But there are also those whose dreams were just a grasp away, but remained out of reach. Silvan Shalom almost had it all. The boy who was born in Tunisia grew up in a tiny apartment in a neglected neighborhood, determinedly and thoroughly fought his way up to become one of the most veteran and prominent politicians in Israel. His march to the top began at the age of 25 as a journalist in a national newspaper, and by the age of 30, he was already the CEO of the Governmental Energy Ministry. When he was 34, he became a parliament member for the Likud party, and his personal story and social agenda swayed many Israelis, namely those coming from North Africa. Then he began a long journey within the different ministries in almost every field. Deputy Defense Minister, Science Minister, Treasury, Foreign Minister, Deputy Prime Minister, and the list goes on and on. Shalom was not just someone who engaged in politics, but was a politician with all his soul. The easiest thing to do is leave. The easiest thing to do is give up. The kitchen is hot, no doubt about it. It's not simple nor easy, but when you know you are doing it for the sake of the Israeli people, you can tolerate any bad smell. His marriage to Judy New Moses, a well-known Israeli socialite and the scion of an extremely wealthy and powerful family, which among other assets owned the country's largest daily, only strengthened his position and enlarged his goals. Yet Shalom remained constantly overshadowed by Benjamin Netanyahu, and his dreams of becoming a prime minister slowly faded away. But in 2014, Shalom identified a new opportunity and wished to join the presidential race. It was then that claims about Shalom's conduct with women began emerging. I told him, listen, leave and say, 16 years ago I cheated on my wife, I exploited my authority, and people will love you more. But he told me, I didn't do it, I didn't do it. Shalom's unwavering path to success was diverted this week. Once again, numerous claims of improper relations and sexual harassment by no less than 13 women, who so far have yet to formally testify or press charges, caused a massive public uproar, leading Shalom to announce his resignation from the political life he loved so much. The state prosecutor ordered the Israeli police to renew a previous investigation into the claims, but no matter the result of such an examination, for Shalom, there's no way back. 
So many changes, Ellie. Where do things stand now? Well, so as said, now the Interior Ministry uh, is uh, is open, and uh, Netanyahu also holds the Economy Ministry, ministry which he's not uh, intending to keep. So we have several posts that Netanyahu will need to hand uh, to hand out uh, to uh, uh, mostly uh, Likud members, maybe uh, also uh, the leader of the uh, Shas Party, uh, party uh, Arya Derry, but. We're talking about a reshuffling, but nothing's going to happen until Tuesday, because on Tuesday... Benjamin Netanyahu, what he's going to do, he's going to... Well, there's an assembly of the Likud Center Party. What he's going to do is he's going to go to the party center, and, he, and they're going to need to um, elect a chairman for the center. There are various people that are running for the post, but that is secondary. Why? Because on the same day, Netanyahu is going to propose to uh, hold the primaries in two months. Now, big problem. Why? Because the primaries are set to be held two months before the election date. Hence the question, why do Benjamin Netanyahu wants to hold the primaries? Two things. First, by not reshuffling the various offices that he has in hand, communication, economics, in interior foreign and ministry. foreign ministry, he's going to hold everybody in check. He's going to see who's voting for what he wants, and then he's going to return a favor. Secondly, people are baffled. Why primaries now? And that's a major question, because if the elections are near, let us all prepare. But well, regardless, another major issue is, while Sylvan is on the decline, someone else in the Likud is planning a rise. Exactly. So uh, uh, regardless to the reason of, uh, of, make, of holding the uh, primary elections earlier, that means that uh, a new member of the Likud party, Nir Balkat, the very uh, lovable uh, mayor of Jerusalem who announced he's joining the Likud uh, this week, will not be able to run against Netanyahu. Now, he says that he needs some more time to uh, uh, to feel the, the Likud uh, atmosphere, to build a, a, a trustworthy relationship with the Likud members, and so on. Uh, and but Barkat is definitely going to be a major challenger for Netanyahu at some point. Uh, we've been talking about Gidon Saar, who left the Likud uh, um, uh, recently uh, as a. Again, a potential uh, challenger for Netanyahu. He announced that he's not intending to uh, to run uh, for the uh, uh, Likud uh, uh, prim premiership uh, anytime soon. But Kahlon, which is also a former Likud member, did say that he is not uh, ruling out uh, a potential uh, new political arrangement, possibly with uh, Gidon Saar together. So we have a lot to expect. A lot of uh, uh, of uh, what, honey? Two small things. Yes. You forgot to mention that Nir Barkat is a billionaire. A small minor detail, which means he can really give a head-to-head -head fight to Benjamin Netanyahu yeah. because Benjamin Netanyahu and is being is sponsored. In the Likud. Yes, oh, it is course. extremely important in the Likud because it's the largest party in Israel with about 125,000 members, and the primaries take place within all of them. Now, that's one thing. The second thing. Neil Bakat has the center stage. Neil Bakat is the mayor of Jerusalem, which is the capital of Israel, which means he is almost on every media and outlet. And major flashpoint. He does, of course, he does whatever he wants. He can get a press conference whenever he wants, which gives him a huge advantage over other uh, uh, incumbents within the Likud who are looking at the number one. Third thing, Sylvan Shalom is out of the race, so he's only left with Israel Katz, the Minister of Transportation, who said out loud, I'm going to run for the chair of the Likud, which means I'm going to run for the prime ministership. Um, Silvan out of the picture, Gidon Saar out of the picture. Um, I do not think he expected Kahlon from the side crash. He did not wait for that. But he's not stupid. He's going to sit on the sideline this coming Tuesday. He's going to see what Bibi does in the Likud Center. If he sees any weakness, he is going to attack viciously. If he's not going to see any weaknesses, he's going to sit idly by, say, he's our leader for now, let him run the show, but he's going to wait. The minute Bibi falls, he's going to be there to kick him when he's down because he wants to be the prime minister. And he said that almost 10 years ago when he ran first for the Jerusalem Post. So we're looking at somebody who has the money, has the ability, and right now is at the center stage. Is it Benjamin Netanyahu we just described or Nir Bakad? Because uh, it's Bakad. practically the, the same. <laughs>
<laughs> not so not a very different distinction both of them have the uh, financial capability both of them has the uh, platform whenever they want and both of them has a lot of supporters within the Likud and generally in Israel so I think their case is pretty much uh, similar the only thing maybe working in uh, to the benefit of Borka that he's fresh blood he brings something new and this is of course will be uh, there's another thing that works for Barkat his money is from home he has no and strings no. attached do we have time for another subject? Because this is the perfect uh, yes, yes. <laughs> connector. One minute for another subject. I'm okay, giving it so to you. Sarah Netanyahu and the uh, and the investigations into uh, all sorts of uh, financial misbehaviors uh, on her behalf. And the major headline of this week is that Sarah Netanyahu's lawyer uh, uh, met with the uh, uh, the uh, government, uh, the general attorney, and told him again, according to reports, that because of uh, Sarah Netanyahu's uh, mental state, she cannot be uh, uh, charged or prosecuted, and this is, of course, a major deal because we've been talking for so many years about the uh, mental capacity of uh, the First Lady, and now it's sort of official. She's not very well. Yeah, to put it mildly. She's, uh, she's, waiting, she's waiting for the new general attorney, who is right now the secretary of the government, who works closely with Benjamin Netanyahu, and they're looking for a different outcome. Well, as we promised, it's always a roller coaster with you both. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Hanni Zubeda and Ellie Hachenberg, Thank for being you. with me again this week.